Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Produced by Lakeland Public Television with host Ray Gildow. Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service. Tax preparation for businesses and individuals. Online at NiswaTax.com. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents, where tonight we're going to talk about the Brainerd Lakes Area Community Foundation, uh, something that's pretty unique in Brainerd in the sense that it's a standalone operation. And my guests this evening are Carl Samp, who is the executive director, and Tom Olson, who is a board, or Tom Anderson, rather, Hello. sorry, Tom, who that's is a fine. board member uh, of this and many other boards. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> and they're both Keep busy. gentlemen I have known for quite a while. Uh, welcome to Lakeland Currents. It's good to have you both here. Thanks Thank for having us, Ray. Yeah. How do you want to start, Carl? Well, you know what to say. Sure. Uh, say, just tell people what the Brainerd Community Area Foundation yeah. is. Yeah, I'll start with a little history of the foundation. <clears throat> so I was back in 1998, a gentleman named John Sullivan, uh, who's since passed away, but uh, John owned Navalis Lawn, uh, Land Company. Um, much of the land that's in Baxter, that's the big box stores now. John was the uh, owner of that area. And so as that developed, uh, John, of course, uh, came upon more and more wealth, and he really wanted to do some good with that. And so he stopped into the St. Cloud Office of Central Minnesota Community Foundation and uh, talked to our president, Steve Jewell, and said, you know, I'd really like to set up some funds and do some good work with, with some of my wealth. and. And uh, so they started that conversation, and then uh, he was joined in by his realtors, uh, Rod Converse and Kevin Close uh, from Close Converse Realty. And, and, uh, and roughly what period of time would this This was been? 1998. 1998, yep, you said? Yep. Okay. And then uh, Bernie <laughs> Roberts from Edward Jones uh, Investments uh, were involved. So those were the four founders of our foundation. So uh, they joined in conversation with uh, Central Minnesota Community Foundation, which is the community foundation around the greater St. Cloud area and uh, started having conversations about what that might look like in Brainerd. And rather than form its own uh, independent community foundation, which there are over 750 in America right now, um, they decided to partner with Central Minnesota Community Foundation. Uh, we do, they did form their own board of directors up here in the Brainerd Lakes area and uh, started the program. And John's funds were the first funds in the program and um, they, they started doing good work back then. So. Uh, that was the formation, and those folks were the were the founders, and, and deserve a ton of credit for their foresight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let, let's just uh, maybe share with our viewers what a little bit of your background is, and we can do the same with Tom because sure. you both have pretty diverse backgrounds. Yep. Well, I grew up in uh, small town, rural southern Minnesota, and uh, went to college at Mankato State. Uh, was a environmental educator, a naturalist by education and uh, did some work. I uh, worked for the state park system for a summer and I spent two seasons up here at the Gull Lake Campground for the Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, became a park ranger for the National Forest Service out in Idaho. Couldn't convince my now wife, beautiful wife, Gail, to uh, move out there with me into the middle of nowhere. So uh, I came back to the Twin Cities and I kind of switched fields from outdoor recreation to therapeutic recreation. Uh, worked with adults with disabilities for a total of 16 years. Um, for uh, three years, I was working on kind of traditional DAC activities, and uh, then we converted to community-based employment services for adults with disabilities, which was really the beginning of my experience with what's called asset-based community development, of really looking at the gifts of people and how do we mobilize those into our community work. Uh, and, and that played into my future too. So I uh, took one year off from that work and uh, led foreigners on cross-continental camping tours for a company called Trek America, and then came back to that company and we converted to totally community-based employment services for adults with disabilities. And within six years, we uh, totally integrated those workers. Uh, we went from 65 workers to 110 workers. <coughs> um, total cumulative wages of $3,500 to $350,000. And um, the, the lesson there I learned was the power of asset-based thinking, what are people's gifts rather than what are their needs and deficiencies, and the power of community to do that. So then uh, my wife's from Brainerd here and her dad passed away on New Year's Day of 1990 unexpectedly. 
and we made the decision to move up to Brainerd and she had to twist my arm to come back up here to the Brainerd Lakes area where I love to hunt and fish and golf and all the great outdoor activities that we have up here. And so uh, I got a job with Central Lakes, while well, I was in Brainerd Technical College, um, working with the OSP or Occupational Skills Program. Uh, so as students with uh, developmental, borderline developmental disabilities, and we helped make the, the transition from school to work and independent, or home living to independent living. And then of course I brought that whole idea that I'd worked with in the Twin Cities and started putting those students out in nonprofits in our community to gain work skills, but also to serve the community. Um, I always felt that uh, um, you know, volunteering shouldn't be just for able-bodied people, it should be for everybody. Uh, we all get a great feeling from doing that, so why shouldn't it be a, mm -hmm. you know, something available to everyone? Well, then I found out that was called service learning, um, of combining volunteerism with, with learning. And so started writing service learning grants at the college and got 13 grants in a row that we wrote. And we kept expanding from, you know, into different programs at the college. And uh, eventually when the two colleges, the technical and community college and merged with Staples all came together, um, we wrote a Bremer grant to uh, do this service learning project. And basically we started doing neighborhood organizing and we created a class called Community Awareness and Activism in the Sociology Department and um, started doing neighborhood organizing in Southeast Brainerd and using that asset-based model. So uh, got citizens engaged. In fact, it was, uh, there was some efforts to kind of keep a group home out of the neighborhood. Um, and when we used this model and showed, you know, how we're gonna look at the gifts of people and utilize them, uh, within six months, the people who were trying to keep the group home out of the neighborhood and the people who actually were in the group home who did move into the neighborhood were working side by side together in the efforts to make Southeast a better neighborhood to build. Yeah. So uh, um, I was in a program of the Initiative Foundation at that time called Healthy Community Partnership Program. Uh, we were the, in the first round of that. And uh, they heard our story of what we did in Southeast and they said, you know, that's a pretty cool model. Um, we think that might work well in small rural communities in our 14 county region. And so they um, hired me to work alongside Carol Spearman uh, in the Healthy Community Partnership Program. Well, within a week, Carol left for the Blandon Foundation and uh, I moved into her vice presidency position and spent nine years in uh, using that asset-based community model in uh, developing small rural communities, uh, neighborhoods in St. Cloud, um, all kinds of different groups. And then we expanded that whole model working with nonprofits, uh, Lake and River Associations, uh, methamphetamine coalitions, early childhood coalitions. So it was really the whole idea of bringing together diverse groups of people, creating a shared vision and a plan of action, and then giving them a few resources uh, to implement that, but at the same time map their own local assets to put them, into, but to, put them to work uh, to make things happen in a positive manner. So you have a pretty broad background. <clears throat> I do, into... yeah, which is awesome for foundation work, you know, because you sure. encounter a lot of different things when you're in a foundation. Sure. You know, so I've worked in, you know, outdoor environmental education, I've worked in people with disabilities, I've worked in community development, economic development, workforce issues, uh, you know, neighborhood organizing. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's broad background. I, you know, I was an ADHD kid, so, you know, I just got to keep <laughs> moving from one thing to another. So. Well, well, Tom, you're a board member. Yes. And yeah. uh, give us a little bit about your background, because you too have a pretty interesting background. Well, it's a little bit diverse too. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm actually a, a Brainerd native and went to high school here and uh, went on to Bemidji State, University of Minnesota, and uh, uh, became a CPA once I was out of college and worked for Arthur Anderson and Jostens and a few organizations like that down in Minneapolis in the St. Cloud area. Then I kind of migrated back up here. Uh, I got connected with Arnie Johnson up here and, and uh, found my way back to the Brainerd area. And I uh, worked with uh, Universal Pensions in the early years and, until it was sold and stayed on for a while and then went on to work up at Hunt Technologies and then also got involved with the um, organization down in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota Thermal Science for a while. We built that organization up and then uh, came back here and uh, working at uh, Integrated Retirement again. So again, different companies. I've uh, been fortunate that uh, very successful companies, most of them, I think seven out of the 10 or whatever it was that uh, have been leaders in their respective industries over the years. So in different, in different businesses and different uh, product lines and that too. So it's been interesting. Uh, and I've been involved in a number of board uh, 
nonprofit boards in the area and still involved in those and uh, really enjoy the type of work and giving back to the community whenever I can. And I think I probably picked up some of that from my father. Uh, he was on the uh, Brainerd City Council for 12 years and I think he uh, gave me some insight as a public service is something that's good for you and it's good for the community. Good for you. So there are a number of organizations and communities, the foundations. Um, your foundation is different. We have the Central Minnesota Initiative Fund in, in Central Minnesota, and there are other initiative funds in the state. You're different from that, though. Why don't you explain a little bit the difference between the two? Sure. Uh, we're both legally community foundations, um, uh, but, and as I said, I spent nine years at the Initiative Foundation. It's a tremendous organization, does great work in the 14 counties in Central Minnesota. Uh, but the real focus is, is programmatic, so uh, they work on community and economic development, mostly economic development issues. And um, we are much more of a donor, donor services oriented community foundation. So our primary focus is really to provide a, a venue or a vehicle for people who want to do philanthropic giving. Um, so we help them set up their own little mini foundations, if you will, donor advised funds. And uh, from that, they can make recommendations for grants on an annual basis or... So that know, people who actually make the donation have some input into where that money's going to go? Yes. Right. They make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when they make that gift, it's, it's a completed gift in the IRS eyes. So we are, you know, legally holders of those funds. So they, but they re make recommendations to us. And if they're eligible organizations they're recommending to, meaning 501c3 charitable organizations, school districts, or local units of government, it's eligible. We will fulfill their wishes. Uh, we wouldn't exist if we didn't do that. Sure. You know, so, um, so that's how we go about doing that work. So we just try and make philanthropy easy. So really, they're not gifting to us. You know, they're gifting to just passed, the community. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So. so when you operate, your, your operation is totally coming from donations. You, you don't get state money. You don't get money from a, a parent organization. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, uh, in some ways, we're a bit different than, the, again, the Initiative Foundation where they get a lot of their funds coming from the uh, Bush Foundation and, McKnight, and, and yeah. McKnight, excuse me, McKnight mm -hmm. Foundation. And, and again, uh, we get more from the donors itself. And, and again, the focus is a little bit different too, Ray, as you can see that, you know, we're Brainerd uh, Lakes Area Foundation. And so that's, again, that's we're focused on that. As Carl mentioned, the Initiative Foundation has a broader purview of maybe 14 counties where we tend to be more focused, uh, more locally, I would say. So talk a little bit about some of the projects that you are involved with. What's, sure. What are you doing? Well, uh, so we have the, the funds that we hold and, and you know, the combinations of how they do that are, it's, it's I've been in foundation work for 20 years, um, but this is my first go around at the donor services side. So I'm pretty amazed at the flexibility and the, you know, the combinations that can be done, whether it's an endowed fund or, or a flexible fund, or they do, you know, annual payouts or pass through money. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that donors can do. You know, we can fulfill almost any wish of a donor. Mm -hmm. um, but we also do work in, uh, we do grant making. So we have a certain amount of unrestrict, what's called unrestricted funds of which we make grants to our community for. And we've chosen, um, you know, there's really, a foundation can kind of do two approaches to grant making. They can do the peanut butter approach or the laser approach. And peanut butter approach means you try and spread your funds out, you know, kind of all over the place. And, you know, give a little here, give a little there. Um, we have chosen the laser approach. Um, back in 2014, uh, Blandon Foundation pulled the cohorts of Brainerd Leader, uh, the Brainerd Leadership, or the Blandon Community Leadership Program together. There's six different groups that have went through in Brainerd. About 60 of us that got together at the Arrowwood Lodge. And we identified um, really the workforce shortage as our biggest challenge to economic vitality here in our community back in 2014. And so um, I was working pretty closely on that with Don Hickman from the Initiative Foundation. And, and we've kind of kept that ball rolling and kept that uh, in the forefront here because uh, you can talk to any employer and it is still, and you guys did a great special on uh, workforce shortages um, through the news, uh, three-part show in the news channel here. But um, it, it's a huge challenge for any regional center uh, in, for sure, rural Minnesota and many other states in the, in the union right now. So it's just a combination of demographics, the work, you know, there's just less people in the working age right now. 
Um, we have an out-migration of young adults in Minnesota, and most of those come out of greater Minnesota. Basically, any regional center like Brainerd that doesn't have a four-year institution, you know, we lose pretty much 50% of each graduating class. Wow. Heads off to a four-year college or the military or see the world or whatever it is. Some of them trickle back, that's great, but you know, many of them don't. And so we're presented with a real challenge here. So we are really concentrating on three things. How do we develop, attract, and retain a quality workforce? So all our grant making the last couple of years. So that is your, that probably your biggest priority from the organization. Definitely, yeah. I mean, that's our focus for our grant making. Okay. So, you know, and we're really looking at those kids, that group that sticks around here after graduation that doesn't go off to a four-year college, you know. And so how are they becoming the best that they can be to be become productive members of our community, you know, be our future workforce, et cetera. So, you know, we're funding projects like Kinship Partners, um, the shop that works with at-risk youth, uh, after-school programs in Crosby and Pine River, Junior Achievement is setting up a new program to teach, teach kids how to set up their own business. And um, so those are all, you know, grants we've made. We've, we've supported the key recruiter program at Bladeck that is recruiting um, kind of key high-level, especially IT professional positions into our community. Um, we also fund projects that help retain people in our community once they get here. So we helped start the Brainerd Newcomers Club back up recently with a grant to community action. Uh, so that, you know, uh, the research shows there's three things that make people love where they live and stay there. And that's gathering places, an open welcoming community, and the aesthetic factor or cool factor. So mm. things like the Riverwalk, we funded a major grant to the Brainerd Riverfront development. Um, we've helped support Lakes Area Music Festival. Um, but, but the Newcomer Club, once again, when people get here, we want them to feel welcome. We want them connected to a group of friends. You know, uh, if you mm -hmm. lock them in here, if you will. You know, because we want them to say it's hard getting people, you know, enough people to come. Once they come, we want them staying here too. So, so those are the kind of projects we're looking to fund. Um, here in the community. So. And, and I think Ray, that's where you can kind of see the community foundation aspect of us that, you know, right now, one of the bigger needs in the community is this workforce development. And so that's where our focus is. Now again, that can change over a period of time and we can see some other needs and that's where we're looked at the uh, community-based needs and trying to connect resources to help the community solve some issues or, or again, make it uh, look at the well-being of the community. You get certain other you know, organizations like Carl, like you mentioned, it might be Kinship, it might be Teen Challenge, whatever, and they're kind of singularly focused on, on an objective there. Whereas you look, at, uh, you look at the Community Foundation, we try to take a broader approach. And right now, as Carl mentioned last year or two, uh, workforce development is, is a major issue. And so we're focusing attention on that. Boy, th that really is a huge issue. I don't think yeah. we can overstate that enough. Yep. Uh, and I think with the immigration changes that we've been seeing, I know the resort is industry here this spring yeah. was really hit. They used to get a lot of Europeans yeah. that worked in some of the bigger resorts in the area, and that was yeah. slowed down or maybe not even available. Yeah. But I, I, I've gone to Florida the last couple of years driving down, and those want ads are oh, everywhere. Yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's in the machine trades, it's in the restaurant, yeah, although, yeah. although the restaurant yeah. business is slowing down a little bit but a lot of these other areas, and it's skilled labor. Right. It's yeah. not just taking people yeah. off the street, so it's encouraging to hear that you're, yeah. you kind of identified three areas here yeah. of developing your skills and then finding yep. ways to keep them here because right. it costs a lot to get people here. That's right. right. So it's worth spending some money to get them to stay, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It really sure is. is. You know, and and uh, we, we have partnered with the Chamber and Bladeck on this topic and Central Lakes College and the school district. Um, kind of the unique position we're in. You know, the Chamber and Bladeck, they, they're pretty concerned with right now and with their membership. Uh, we have the unique opportunity to look into the future, you know, 10, 15 years. You know, who's gonna be the future workforce then? So it's these younger kids that are in our community that are gonna stick around, you know. And, and we can look, you know, beyond the needs of our membership to the broader community. So, and I think part of that is educating people. Um, I'm not sure all businesses stop and think about that future workforce and where they're gonna come from and the value that places like Kinship Partner and the shop play in our community, early childhood education. What is the, what is the shop? I'm not the sure. The shop is a youth center that works with at-risk kids age 14 to 21. Here in Brainerd? So, right, and it's right on the corner of 8th and, and Washington Street. Okay. 
Yeah, and so they, they do a tremendous job. They, they actually have a computer refurbishing center there. So we just made a, a pretty significant grant for us to them for general operations this year. So they teach kids computer repair skills and recycling. Um, they have a bicycle recycle program, which teaches kids to, they take in bicycles, they refurbish them, fix them up, and uh, mm. either sell them or get them back out into the community for, uh, for kids. So, so that's a program that helps build skills uh, with those kids in our community. So. so do you have other employees in your organization that actually serve as a liaison to some of these yeah. projects that you're funding? Yeah, yeah it's me. <laughs> just, just so you're, you're kind of a one-person operator. Yeah, we right have, a, have a half-time admin assistant that we're actually uh, just taking a little change in direction. I've been doing interviews the last two days now for um, a little higher level position called donor services coordinator that's going to be part-time to start with. Um, that will really but help. But you're kind of in a growth mode. You're, you're seeing we yourself yeah. growing because right. Tom, yeah. you were saying that it, you're, you're seeing some real changes. Yeah, here. I think I think uh, really uh, look at our, our history, Ray, and, and uh, you know we've been around for 19 years now, and for until the past uh, about year and a half or so, we just had a, uh, a part-time um, director, uh, whether it be Mike Burton, Bill Brecken. We had a number of individuals that served that role very well. But a couple, uh, about a year and a half or two years ago, the board decided that for us to really be successful and to do the community, do the right thing for the community, we needed to bring on a full-time executive director. And, and we made the commitment to, uh, uh, to do that and, and brought in Carl. And uh, he's done just a tremendous job. And we've seen things elevate already. And like you said, we're looking at taking the next step now. Can we provide additional support for Carl to continue to have him uh, be more effective and to make more of an impact in the community. I'd say that uh, we've seen uh, the organization grow. We now have about uh, $10 million in assets uh, that we have uh, about 90 or so uh, funds, different uh, donor funds or agency funds as we call them. And uh, we've granted over $6 million back into the community. And uh, we are part, I would say that, you know, to, to give a full understanding here, we are part of Community Giving, which is located in St. Cloud. And they're kind of an umbrella organization over uh, the different community colleges in, 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 I mean, the community foundations in central Minnesota. There, we've got community foundations in, in St. Cloud, Alexandria, Wilmer, Brainerd are the four main ones. And then we have some community funds like Recorey and Painesville and some others like that. And, and St. Cloud provides kind of the umbrella over that, making sure that we are um, pooling assets so that we get a better return and more professionally managed on the asset side of it, that we share common practices and policies that we're uh, accredited with the uh, National Community, Founda uh, community uh, Foundation, uh, that we get audited financial statements, that we have, if, if Carl and, and needs additional assistance, whether it be staffing for a short term, or whether it be some expertise that we don't particularly have ourselves or an issue that he's not familiar with, we've got a resource also to go to. And so uh, they do provide that umbrella, which is helpful and makes us more efficient and allows us to uh, operate with a relatively small staff here. So you also said you had a program for women. Right. Could you talk just a sure. little bit about that? Sure, we have Brainerd Lakes Area Women's Fund. And so that's a, a, called a field of interest fund for us. So, you know, so the, we also have the Brainerd Public School Foundation under um, our, as a field of interest fund for so, uh, But the Women's Fund uh, has, you know, it's an endowed fund. And so the earnings off of that can be granted out to the community to support projects that um, assist women in our community. And it's not just women. Uh, they made a grant to the We Are New, um, the, the new clinic in town here for reproductive education uh, and support. And they've supported the um, sexual assault services program and the Women's Center. And uh, they run a great program at the college called Presenting Yourself um, that helps women, uh, maybe low-income women generally, um, to learn how to um, put a resume together, um, how to Enter into interview, the workforce. how to, yeah, how to dress, um, how to eat when mm -hmm. you're out in a business situation. Mm -hmm. uh, just all aspects of that and really help them um, get ready for the workforce, to enter that workforce. It's really a cool program. And, and our Women's Fund has a new campaign now called the 365 Campaign. So really, uh, we're asking people who want to just donate a dollar a day, ideally in one check for $365, <laughs> uh, to support the work of the Women's Fund 
And what happens is half that money goes into their endowment that continues to build over time and grants are made from that. But a half of that will also go into this year's um, grant making funds for the Women's Fund. And those people who join that club, that giving circle, 365 giving circle, also get to be part of the grant making decision then with mm. the Women's Fund Committee that year. So it's really a great way to engage the broader community in this effort to support our women in our community. So, um, you know, so we're really excited. In fact, I'm going right from this interview um, to meet with our committee chair, Jill Carlson, of that committee to talk about this campaign and um, how, we can, how we can promote it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and I, I, if it's okay, I, one of the things we're looking at with the Women's Fund is having a special event just for women, w female professional advisors in our community. So estate attorneys, CPAs, financial advisors, bankers, et cetera. Mm. And we want to invite them all in to learn about this initiative, encourage them all to join, but encourage their clients as well uh, to consider joining this effort sure. with us alongside of us. So, so really the biggest part of my job too is working with the pro pro professional advisors of our community. Doing that networking. Yeah, yeah, because you know, 80 to 85% of gifts nationally uh, from community foundations come as referrals from professional advisors. So it's just imperative that I spend time with them, educating them about the opportunity in our community, you know, the work that we're doing to strengthen our community, how we can capture wealth, keep doing good here. But at the same time, you know, meet a special need that people have of wanting to give back to their community. You know, so research shows that people, you know, that when professional advisors talk to their clients about charitable giving, it strengthens that relationship between them. And so we want to help with that. Well, we're down to the last minute, but maybe we could, uh, you could tell people how to get a hold of you if they want to become involved as a donor or if they want to become a, uh, an applicant for a grant. How, how do they get Sounds in touch great. with you? Well, we have a website. It's communitygiving.org, communitygiving.org, and just click on the Brainerd, Brainerd Lakes Area Community Foundation link there. And uh, my phone number is 218-821-5619. Uh, anybody can get a hold of me. Uh, my email address is ksamp at communitygiving.org, and I'd be happy to assist anybody with, with uh, the making philanthropy easy for them and helping them feel better about what they're doing for the community. Carl Samp, the executive director, and Tom Anderson, a board member, thank you very much for taking the time to come on and tell us about this program. It sounds like a really good program. Yeah, thanks for having really us, good. and thanks for the yep. work that Lakeland Agreed. PBS does. So. You bet. Thank you. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow, so long until next time.